Hey, Hannah, I know this is out of the blue, but when you finish work, could you please go home and gather your belongings? They're piled up so high, it's practically blocking the whole place. What's going on? Why do I suddenly need to retrieve my belongings? Oh, I see. Have you mistaken the date for when I'm visiting my mother? That's really sweet of you, but you've got the dates mixed up. I'm actually planning to visit my mother next weekend, not this one. Actually, that's not the case, but I think everything will make more sense when you get home. Do you have to work overtime today? Well, since the project is over, I won't have to work overtime. But come on, Kevin, give me a little hint. Why do I need to come and get all my stuff? I'd like you to take your belongings and leave our house. I've already taken them outside, so please come and pick them up. What? Wait, do you mean we're moving to a new place to live? Did you decide to buy that beautiful house we visited together last week? Oh, that's wonderful! Our current house is so cramped with just one bedroom, and I'm even pregnant with our twins. I've been worried about how crowded it would be once the babies are born. This is fantastic news! Jacqueline has been asking for her own room, and now she'll finally get one. I never thought you'd agree to buy that house, especially considering it's far from your sister's place. So, you secretly bought it to surprise me? Exactly. You don't need to worry about the house being too small anymore. But, well, there's a slight correction. You're moving out of my house, so that means you'll be heading home earlier today, right? It's great. When you come back, just swing by to pick up your stuff. I've nearly finished moving everything outside. Please try to do it as soon as possible. I wouldn't want your things to be left out there for too long. No one's around to watch over them right now, so if anything goes missing, it won't be my responsibility. Wait, are we moving out today? Why the rush? And why are you only mentioning my stuff? What about your things and Jacqueline's belongings? Since we're moving together, wouldn't it make sense to move all of our stuff at once? I'm a bit confused about what's happening. Well, actually, Jacqueline and I will still be staying in this house. You're the only one who will be leaving. You see, my little sister Luna and her daughter Sandy have been going through a tough time lately. What do you mean? Why do I have to move out on my own? Your little sister again? What's happened this time? Luna recently got divorced, you know, so she's in a difficult situation. She's struggling financially and feeling sad all the time because she's still trying to cope with that breakup. And Luna's mood is affecting Sandy a lot. Sandy is having a tough time adjusting to her new elementary school and making friends. Wait, sad? Wasn't Luna really happy last month because she got half of her ex-husband's property? Plus, wasn't the reason for their breakup because she had an affair with the mailman and her ex-husband discovered it? Why are you portraying Luna as if she's the victim now? And didn't Sandy just change schools after Luna's divorce and move? It's only been about a month, right? I'm sure she'll settle into the new environment and make friends eventually. What are you talking about? How can you say that about your sister-in-law? Luna's affair happened because she felt neglected and ignored by her ex-husband. He was focused on work all day, earning money, and not spending time with Luna at social events, which hurt her, you know. And this is about your knees. Why are you so nonchalant? It's just an elementary school. Making friends shouldn't take that long. She should be making 10 new friends every day. Do you really think it's that simple? Of course, kids usually make friends easily. But Sandy hasn't made any friends yet, and Luna is really worried that she might be struggling with antisocial behavior or even depression. So we thought it might be better for Sandy to switch to the same school Jacqueline attends. I think they'll get along well. I guess that could be a good idea. Having Sandy and Jacqueline attend the same school might help them support each other. Plus, it could strengthen the bond between the cousins, right? But how does any of this relate to my belongings being outside? Is Luna giving you more advice again? But because Luna is still grieving and can't get out of her sadness, she hasn't been able to work and has already spent all her savings. So she can't pay the rent anymore. The landlord also kicked the mother and daughter out in the streets. Plus, if Sandy is going to transfer schools, they need to live closer to us. As a big brother, I can't just let my sister suffer alone, right? So Luna suggested they live with me and I agreed. Hold on, without even discussing it with me? I can't believe you'd make such a huge decision without involving me. How could you decide to kick your six-month pregnant wife out of our house just because of your sister? It would save them a lot of money to live with me and they'll have a lot more space. And you're much more mature than Luna, so I think you can take care of yourself. Luna is still just a little girl who needs attention and care. I can't just leave my sister for now and not care about her. So I want you to leave and take all of your belongings with you. Seriously? You think I'm more mature than Luna? Are you kidding? We're the same age. And wait a minute, 
You expect a pregnant wife to suddenly move to a new place and fend for herself? Do you realize how hard it is for me to move around these days? Are you only considering your sister and neglecting your own wife's and children's well-being? When will you wake up and see through Luna's manipulations? This isn't the first time she's pretended to be innocent just to make unreasonable demands, is it? This whole situation is beyond ridiculous. This is my home too, and I'm not leaving over something so absurd. Hannah, can't you show a little compassion towards your sister-in-law? I'm doing this because I care about you. You've recently switched to a new office quite far away, right? You've been complaining about the long commute and I've been getting up early every day to drive you. It's been draining. I thought maybe it was an opportunity for you to find a place closer to work. It's a win-win for both of us. So you want us to live apart now? So that's the only reason you can think of to justify kicking me out of the house without a word of negotiation or warning? That's exactly what I'm saying. But it's not just an excuse. I think you should start looking for a new place soon. Also, it's better if you collect your belongings sooner rather than later. Leaving them outside might attract thieves. This is incredibly thoughtless. Besides, I never agreed to leave the house. Why would you just throw my stuff out like that? Did you even discuss any of this with Jacqueline? She should have a say in it too. No need to discuss it with Jacqueline. Besides, Jacqueline is my daughter. I'm sure she will listen to me. I know she'll be overjoyed. Spending time with Sandy will make them best friends. This is so insensitive. I never thought you could be so heartless. Let me remind you, you can't just treat me like trash and throw me out on the street. I am your legal wife, and I've contributed equally to this house. If you keep forcing me out, you're actually breaking the law. If you're so eager to help your sister, why not rent her an apartment near the elementary school? Whoa, calm down. There's no need to get so upset just because you won't be living with me anymore. And besides, if I rent a place for Luna, it would likely strain my finances, especially with school fees and other expenses. However, if you find a place and rent a room or something, you could save money and maybe even help out Luna with some allowance. Hold on a minute. So you not only want to provide shelter for Luna, but also expect me to financially support her? Are you serious? What's really going on here? No matter how angry or upset you get, the decision has been made. You're moving out and that's final. Luna and Sandy are moving in today, so there's no place for you here anymore. Got it? My sister has been through a lot and I want to lend her a hand. I hope you find a new place soon. Spare me your feigned concern. I've already got a new place lined up. I never expected this. I was planning to surprise you today, but it seems I'm the one who's in for a surprise. Luckily, I was prepared in advance. Seriously? That was quick. But what surprise are you talking about? Exactly. I just wrapped up the final project at work, and guess what? They've promoted me to lead a new branch. And as a bonus, they're giving me a new apartment. I received the keys yesterday, and I was going to break the news to you today. Little did I know, you beat me to it. So, if it's alright with you, I'll be moving with Jacqueline to that fancy apartment. As for you, feel free to enjoy the cramped apartment with your dear sister. What? Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? We wouldn't have had to argue so intensely. This is incredible news. How many bedrooms does the new place have? Is there a garden? But wait, don't bother telling me now. Just give me the address and I'll help Luna and Sandy move there too. I'll start packing up and getting ready to move as well. Hang on, are you joking? I never said I'd let you and your sister step foot in that apartment. Oh, come on. Don't be so upset. Aren't you just sad about not living with me anymore? Everything is sorted now. I'm your husband, so your house is mine too. Logically, we should move out together, right? Oh no, that's not happening. Weren't you the one who initially wanted to squeeze into that cramped apartment with your sister? Well, let me help you realize that dream. I'll hire someone to collect Jacqueline's and my belongings and move them to the new place. We'll be heading there soon. Thanks for putting all my stuff outside, by the way. It's saving me a lot of time. I'll be moving out today, just as you wish. What? Hannah, you can do this to me. Hannah, come back here and talk to me. Hi, Hannah. I want to apologize for the situation we're in right now. I appreciate your understanding. Sandy and I both thank you for being willing to move out so that we can have your room. No worries. I had already decided to leave, even before you and Sandy were moving in. Let's be honest, Luna. It's just you and me here. You don't have to put on an innocent act for the world to see, do you? Huh? Pretending to be naive? I don't have to do that. I truly feel sorry that my situation led to Kevin asking you to leave the house. 
But Kevin mentioned you got a new apartment from the company? That's amazing. It's something that I'd never even dare to imagine, considering I'm just a young woman who can't handle work pressure like you can on your own. Actually, moving to that new place wasn't solely because it's closer to my workplace. I made this decision because I felt it was time for a change. And I also needed some distance from both you and Kevin. Oh, did something trigger this all of a sudden? Or are you suggesting that I'm the reason behind the issues between you and Kevin? I haven't done anything. Is it because you, well, maybe don't think you deserve Kevin? Are you trying to pin everything on me? Can you please explain what I've done to make you feel this way? It just seems like Kevin prioritizes you and Sandy more than his own wife, and that's been bothering me. So I thought it might be best to move out. Isn't that what you and Kevin want? Hannah, why are you talking about me like that? I've never tried to come between you and Kevin. You're my sister-in-law, and of course I want both of you to be happy. This isn't the first time you've acted innocent in front of your brother to get your way, right? Do you remember the last time when Kevin and I were about to go on our honeymoon? You came and tearfully told Kevin that you also wanted to take a trip with your brother. And the destination we were headed to was your dream vacation spot. With just a few words, your brother ended up leaving me behind to go on a trip with you. I thought you'd eventually grow out of such behavior, but I never expected that even now, with kids, you'd still resort to these tactics. Why are you so angry? Is this about what happened the other day? Are you upset because I invited Kevin to Sandy's birthday party? If that's the reason, it seems a bit petty. Please don't brush it off like that. We had a family picnic planned in the park on that day, but you called Kevin and asked him to buy presents for Sandy because you had forgotten. It's just hard for me to comprehend why you do that. I was disappointed by your actions. I didn't have any other option. I don't have a car, and Kevin was the only one available to help. Kevin chose to prioritize buying gifts over our family outing, spending nearly $200 on a present for a young child. He stayed at the party and didn't return home until the next morning. Jacqueline was really upset about it. She had been looking forward to spending the day together. I get it, the picnic didn't go as planned, but it was just a picnic, right? Can't we plan more picnics? What about next weekend or next month? Sandy's birthday is a bigger deal because it only comes around once a year. Seriously? But Jacqueline's favorite picnic spot has been closed for renovations and repairs for the last three months. Besides, in three months, I'll be having a baby, and it'll take a while before I'm fit enough to go on a picnic. And if your daughter's birthday party is so important, how did you forget to buy her a birthday present? Oh, come on. It's a small thing, and it's in the past. Do you have to keep bringing it up? Everything worked out fine in the end, didn't it? I heard you still managed to have the picnic and even brought a framed picture of Kevin. Sounds like you had a good time. Yes, that was his idea. He said it was like spending the day as a family. It felt a bit ironic. I'm genuinely sorry. Raising Sandy as a single mother after my divorce has been really tough. You should also consider my side of the story. I can understand the challenges of being a single mother, but some choices led to your situation. Your actions, including infidelity, played a role that can't be ignored easily. What? Are you serious? Now you're just making fun of me, right? I'm just stating the truth. Raising Sandy on your own might be hard, but it's a consequence of decisions made. You also sought custody for child benefits, which might make people question your choices. I mean, take a look at yourself. You haven't earned a dime since you became an adult. Your expenses have been covered by your mother and brother throughout your life. So why are you so confident about getting custody of your kids? How dare you? Just because you're my brother's wife doesn't mean you can speak to me in any manner you want. He looks out for me. I understand that, but Kevin is my husband and the father of our child. He has other responsibilities, and I'd appreciate it if you stop relying on him for everything. Shut up, loser. Do you think you can take my brother away from me? Throughout Kevin's life, I've always been the dear little sister who needs care. And in this game of attention, I've always been the winner. <laughs> So, the one who deserves his care and money can only be me. Is this your true attitude coming out now? You believe Kevin cares about you too much? Of course he cares about me. I'm his sister after all. I'm his top priority. If that bothers you, maybe you should think about a divorce. After all, you weren't fit to be my brother's wife from the start. Seriously? Are you being genuine? Since you're going to live separately now, perhaps getting a divorce is the right path. You know, when a couple lives apart, eventually feelings fade, right? If that's the case, instead of enduring the pain of being left, I suggest you get a divorce now. I can even help with the paperwork. 
You must be joking. Quit giving ridiculous advice to everyone. My brother and I have always been close since childhood. You're just his wife. Don't try to take him away from me. My suggestion is that you work hard on your own so you can provide for your children. Because Kevin has promised to support me and Sandy until she finishes college. And I'm sure you're skilled at your job. So this shouldn't be too difficult, right? In any case, I'm thankful you left so we can live here. <laughs> Hey, Hannah, when do you plan on coming back home? Things are getting messy here. Excuse me? Why should I come back there? The laundry and dishes are piling up. The floor is covered in garbage and leftovers. The fridge is empty. Nothing left. The bathroom is filthy because no one's cleaned it. Can you please hurry up and come clean up this place? Huh? What are you talking about? Why am I the only one responsible for cleaning? I thought we agreed that I was moving out. And now that I've moved out, that house is yours and your sister's responsibility. You shouldn't treat me like a servant who's always on call. Who cares if you've moved out or if we are living separately? You're still my wife. And you should come home on weekends to help with the housework. It's your responsibility. Are you serious? So, where's your sister and why isn't she cleaning up? You know how much Luna means to me. From childhood to adulthood, she's never had to lift a finger to wash dishes or do her laundry. How can I make her do the housework now? Besides, you're still Luna's sister-in-law. Can't you help her out? It's an ideal world. I want you to drop by after work every day and help out. But I'll settle for weekends. I'm being kind here. You're welcome. You must be kidding. Are you expecting a pregnant wife with your twins to do all the housework alone and cater to your sister? Is that what you're telling me? We're family, right? Don't use your pregnancy as an excuse to avoid work. Did you know that in the past, my mother worked on the farm and did housework every day when she was pregnant with Luna? Now you only need to do a few small tasks like that, and you've been complaining nonstop? I'm at a loss for words. I never thought you were this kind of person. I used to think you were just overprotective of your sister, but now I see that you're… obsessed with Luna, and that really creeps me out. Well, I'm not your wife anymore, by the way. Why should I do the housework when I don't even live there anymore? Wait, what do you mean? You're not my wife anymore? We're not married? Actually, we are divorced. I've already submitted the paperwork. I've had enough of you. What are you talking about? You can't just go and get a divorce without me knowing about it. Did you even notice that Jacqueline, our daughter, has been struggling with her mental health recently? She told me she's been crying every night for the past six months. She says that her dad doesn't love her anymore and that she doesn't want to live with him. It seems you never noticed because you were too busy with your sister, barely spending any time at home and always with her. Hold on a second. You're saying you want a divorce just because of that? I've always told you how much I care for my sister. We lost both our parents when we were young and I'm the only person she can rely on. But Jacqueline is different. She is much happier than Luna and Sandy because she still has both her mom and dad. So I think Jacqueline already has your love and care. And I'm sharing my concern for Luna and Sandy. Yes, I know all of that. And it's great that you two have a strong bond. But something isn't right here. Huh? I don't see what the problem is. The problem is you've taken it too far. I've told you many times before. I've had enough of you and your sister. I can't take it anymore. Actually, it was Luna who suggested the divorce. She even helped me with the entire process and introduced me to her divorce lawyer. Luna helped you with the divorce? Yes. She's the one who proposed it and provided me with the paperwork with your signature on it. I had no idea it was forged. How could she get my signature? Oh no, it must be the time she said she wanted my signature for some bills. I signed it without looking at it. And you submitted those divorce papers? Yes, I did. Everything went smoothly. And now we're officially divorced. No way. You've got to be kidding me. How could you get a divorce without my consent? That's illegal. It wasn't me. If the name was forged, then it was your sister Luna who did it. You should be mad at her, not me. If it's truly illegal, maybe we should involve the police. Just stop. How can you be so heartless? Just because I spent a little time with my sister, you want a divorce? Are you out of your mind? Not at all. I think you guys are the unreasonable ones. But why are you so shocked? I'm just creating the best conditions for you to take care of your sister. Isn't she an innocent girl who doesn't know much about the world? So, you should spend more time looking after her instead of these two soon-to-arrive children and our daughter. Oops, I forgot. 
You've already done that. What did you just say? Fine, let's get divorced then. Maybe you'll understand Luna's situation once you experience the struggles of being a single mother. Don't come crying to me later. As I told you before, we're already divorced, so you're a bit late. I'll be coming over to collect Jacqueline's things. Hey there! You finally took my advice, didn't you? Smart choice! Oh, there's something I forgot to mention. Since you and Kevin are divorced now, could you please refrain from relying on him? I heard you told him that you don't need any help raising Jacqueline and your two kids anymore. So please don't come back to ask for help with her or for her tuition in the future. What are you talking about? You know, from now on my brother has to support me and pay for Sandy's schooling. It's a no-brainer to let Kevin work so hard to raise four kids at once, right? You're an adult. I'm sure you'll understand that too, right? Don't worry, I don't plan on seeking any assistance. That's good to hear. That means Kevin's entire salary will be available for Sandy and me. He listens to everything I say and buys me everything I want. I'm even planning to ask him to cover our living expenses until Sandy gets married down the line. Well, I hope his salary is sufficient for all that. <laughs> huh? Why do you say that? Up until now, my brother was still the one who earned money and supported this family. Of course, he earns a lot and can take care of my mother and me. What? I don't think $1,000 is enough to cover monthly expenses. Also, Luna, you're currently unemployed, right? Wait, seriously? Kevin only earns $1,000 a month? This is unbelievable. I thought Kevin was making much more than that. Didn't Kevin say he was earning $5,000 a month when I asked last time? And since he's still being considered for a promotion, that salary could double. Kevin actually got a new job last year, and it was partly for your sake too. Remember how you've been asking for his help, regardless of whether it was the weekend or not? Well, he couldn't assist you on weekdays if he kept working at his old company, so he decided to leave to be available when you needed him. The new company he joined offered flexible hours, but due to your frequent requests for help, he barely had time to focus on his work. That's why his income has reduced to around 1000 a month now. No! You're lying to me! My brother is not useless! He still makes a lot of money. If not, how could he afford to buy expensive gifts for Sandy and treat me all the time? Even that he didn't have to pay for living expenses, he had the freedom to spend the remaining money as he pleased. What? So you were covering everything else? Yes, I was paying for everything our living expenses, rent, and more. Now that we are divorced, I wonder who will be taking care of all of those expenses. I still can't believe it! As I mentioned earlier, I don't intend to seek help in raising Jacqueline or paying for her tuition in the future. Because I know full well that even if I asked for that financial support, Kevin wouldn't be able to pay it. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy living together. What? Wait, Hannah, you have to tell me what the hell is going on here! You! It was you who took all my brother's money! Give me back my rich brother! Hey, Hannah, let's get remarried and live together again. I finally realized how much you mean to me. What are you talking about? Just listen to me. Luna told me she's going to remarry. She said that means she doesn't need me anymore. Can you believe that? After all the sacrifices I've made for her? Well, once she gets married, she might not need you anymore. Maybe it's time for her to move on. And honestly, I can understand why. Her husband can take care of her. Understand why? You think I'm that dispensable? She doesn't even want her new husband to know about me. She's ashamed of my low income. Can you imagine? She's going to erase me from her life like I'm worth nothing. Frankly, that doesn't sound too surprising considering your history. It's sad considering all the times I helped her. Now she just plans to pretend I don't exist. After everything I've done for my family, this is how she repays me? Isn't that ridiculous? Ridiculous is a good word for it. Thank you. Finally, someone who understands how I feel. You really are the person I'm destined to be with. I'm really down because of how Luna's treated me. But it made me realize something so important. The person I should be giving my attention to is you. So let's get remarried. We can live happily together. Me, you, and Lily. What I find ridiculous here isn't about your relationship with Luna. It's about you texting me, groveling and begging me to come back to you. What do you think, after kicking me out of the house to live with your sister, that I'd forgive you and come back like nothing happened? Don't even think about getting back together. We will never, ever get back together again. Goodbye, Kevin. Our chapter is closed for good. So, Kevin, after his grand eviction plan, 
hit the bottle hard. I'm talking about an all-day bender that made him a permanent fixture at the local bar. Guess what? Work didn't get the memo, and they promptly kicked him to the curb. Jobless and boozed up, he had to kiss his fancy house goodbye and ended up living the street life. Luna, oh Luna, didn't learn a thing from her mess. She got hitched again, but barely a month in, she was back to her old tricks. Stealing from hubby, sneaking around, and bam, divorce 2.0. Oh, and she got a VIP pass to the Slammer for her thieving adventures. Sandy? Poor kid got caught up in her mom's mess and had to go live with her biological dad. 